The library of anime is enormous, with shows ranging from cute rom-coms to battles for the universe's life or death. Once considered a nerdy thing to like, anime is becoming more well-known and turning into a global phenomenon these days. But what makes anime so unique? Why is it so popular? Before we can dive into why anime is really popular, we need to learn how anime came to be. It all started in the early 1900s, when a Japanese animator created the very first Japanese animation. The short animated film was called Katsudo Shashin, and it featured a young boy drawing the Japanese characters for the phrase Katsudo Shashin. The entire movie was produced by using celluloid film and consisted of only using 50 different frames. Many have questioned the legitimacy of Katsudo Shashin, some even believing it not to have existed. In 1917, the first commercial anime was produced and broadcast in Japan. The anime Dekobo Shingacho Melan no Shippai is widely accepted as the first anime ever created. Animators made this short film in the form of cutout animations, where characters, props, and backgrounds are cut from paper, fabric, or even photographs. This style of animation was very prevalent in the early years of anime. As the 20th century dawned, Japanese filmmakers began to experiment with other animation methods, mainly methods that were established in the United States and other European countries. With this investment into animation, the art form became a legitimate form of entertainment by the 1930s. World War II brought on a lot of progress for Japanese animation. The government injected money into animation in exchange for educational shorts and propaganda. This funding pushed the limits of what had been possible in animation before, even if it came with censorship in the creative works. Animators like Mitsuyo Siyo and Kenzo Masaoka flourished during this time. Masaoka was the first animator in Japan to use cell animation and sound in anime, and he went on to teach many other influential animators. Following the war, the first animation production company was born. You may be familiar with some of this company's more famous works, Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Sailor Moon, or Yu-Gi-Oh! This company is one of the reasons that anime is what it is today. Of course, we're talking about Toei. Masaoka and his colleague Zenjiro Yamamoto created Toei. They didn't start off by producing world-famous shows such as what they're famous for these days. In fact, their first theatrical features were more similar to Walt Disney films than modern-day anime. One of their most noteworthy early films, Shonen Sarutobi Sasuke, a mini-epic about ninjas and sorcery, was the first anime to ever be theatrically released in the United States. Toei wasn't the only well-known animation studio at this time, though. In 1963, Mushi Production exported the first significant animation from Japan to the United States. Based on a manga, Tetsuwana Tamu, or Astro Boy, we have the story of a robot boy with superpowers. It aired on NBC thanks to Fred Ladd, who also brought over Tetsuka's Kimba the White Lion. Astro Boy, even in his early stages, embodied the modern-day aesthetic for animation, especially the big anime eye aesthetic. Despite the enormous success of Japanese anime, animation, American audiences weren't quite ready for anime, and sadly, Astro Boy received terrible ratings and did not complete its first run on air. Most Western cartoons featured animals rather than humans. Studies that were done mentioned Western audiences felt uncomfortable seeing human characters in a strange or unusual situation. Just because Astro Boy did not succeed as intended, though, didn't mean that others weren't waiting to try. In 1968, another animation studio followed Astro Boy's footsteps. This animation studio, known as Tatsuno created an overseas hit. It too was based on a manga and featured human characters. However, it was much more grounded in reality than a robot boy. This anime was Mach Go Go Go, also known as Speed Racer. This anime was a hit both in Japan and America. Audiences watching Astro Boy and Speed Racer didn't realize that they were watching heavily reworked shows. The openings to both of these shows were redubbed in English, and many things were removed from the shows in order to appease network censors. It would take a long time before there was an audience that demanded the original versions of anime. Anime grew more and more popular during the 70s. Eventually, they had what many considered to be the golden age of anime, the 1980s. This boom of anime gave birth to many great works, such as Dragon Ball, Captain Sabuya, and Akira. During this time, director Hayao Miyazaki, a worker under Toei, and colleague Aisao Takahata, who was the creator of classics like Palm Poco and Grave of the Fireflies, began their own studio. This studio went on to be Studio Ghibli. Studio Ghibli is famous for creating two of the most successful anime movies to date before the decade even finished, Laputa, Castle in the Sky, and Kiki's Delivery Service. Gainax, famous for producing Neon Genesis Evangelion, also grew in popularity in the 80s. They started off as a group of fans making animated shorts for conventions, but eventually transitioned into a professional studio. 
The home video market started to flourish in the 1980s, which only made anime grow even more prevalent. This allowed for anime to be more experimental and open to many more overseas markets. VHS also gave birth to original animated videos, or OAV. These typically were shorter works that were only shown on VHS. OAVs experimented with ambitious animation, surreal storytelling, and gave birth to an adults-only niche, hentai. Unfortunately, though, Japanese censorship boards started to be more particular about what could and couldn't be shown on Japanese television. Shows like Neon Genesis Evangelion, The Ghost in the Shell, and Cowboy Bebop were forced into limited and late-night runs on TV. Despite that, anime kept on growing. In fact, Ghost in the Shell was a huge inspiration for the Matrix films. Anime began to air more and more on American television, with dubbed shows like Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, and Pokemon. It seemed like anime would only keep getting more and more popular as English dub shows were in high demand. Major video retailers like Suncoast dedicated entire spaces just to anime. This explosion of anime created a whole new wave of people, otaku, literally meaning geek or nerd in Japanese. Anime seemed to almost directly target otaku, focusing on many genres that fit under the geek umbrella. The 1990s brought an implosion of Japan's bubble economy, which damaged the blooming anime industry. Works in this time were more focused on what would sell rather than experimenting and being edgy. Anime based on manga and light novels were almost guaranteed hits. Works like One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach. Moe, which is a word for the feelings of affection and adoration toward characters that are typically female, became an aesthetic with shows like like Clanid and Canon that were moneymakers. OAVs fell off in popularity as producers found easier money in TV productions. Sadly, the industry's working conditions grew even worse than before, with 90% of animators who entered the field leaving after only three years of grueling hours for small pay. The 90s approved to be especially challenging for the anime scene, but anime persevered. The demand for DVDs, a new format of video, grew intensely, which only made anime even more popular. A single disc could have both the English dubbed and subbed versions, keeping those fans who wanted the original version of anime happy. The rise of DVDs led to an increase in digitally powered piracy. If shows weren't licensed for the United States, it would be easy to find a version on the internet that was subtitled by fans. The late 2000s was hard for the global economy in general, which caused a lot of anime companies to cut back or go under. Studios like ADV Films and Genion fell and moved a lot of their titles to the company Funimation, which would go on to become the largest English language anime licensor. During this time, Time, retailers had to cut back on floor space for anime due to places like Amazon and new companies like Crunchyroll, a company that used to pirate fan subbed anime before moving into a more legal distribution method these days. More and more shows like Death Note or Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood started to be made, and it seemed like the future of anime lied in streaming. It's very possible that anime in the future might not look anything like the anime we have now, as anime tends to evolve with society and the people that enjoy it. So now that we know a history of anime, why is it so popular? There are many reasons why. For example, as we just mentioned, anime has a unique ability to grow with its viewers. Takamasa Sakurai, a highly regarded anime expert, claims that anime has been widely accepted due to it being unconventional. He was quoted as saying, Japanese anime broke the convention that anime is something that kids watch. Audiences overseas say that they enjoy anime's intensity with endings that aren't as easy to predict as other adult entertainment. The stories told within anime are compelling and stimulating. Susan J. Napier, a professor at Tufts University, says that anime moves and provokes viewers to work through certain contemporary issues in ways that older art forms cannot. To Napier, an anime isn't just a Japanese cartoon because it can encompass so many different genres. Anime never compromises in its narrative style, pacing, imagery, humor, emotions, and psychology. While Western animation studios like Disney gained a reputation for having solid products but still being predictable or enforcing cultural norms, Forms, anime is different in its approach to universal themes and imagery. Another reason why anime is so popular is that many people who grew up watching the English dub versions on television are now adults. When they were kids watching the shows, they likely didn't know that they were even anime, but it created a soft spot in their hearts for those shows. With the prevalence of anime streaming services, anime has become more accessible than ever before, allowing adults to relive their childhood by re-watching classics that they grew up with or discovering something entirely new. Anime is also also visually appealing. The animation keeps getting better and better, more creative, and more diverse. 
Angel Ching Lan Li, a blogger, makes an argument for the aesthetic appeal of anime, saying, Anime at its best is a genuine, richly fascinating contemporary Japanese art form with an exceptionally appealing visual style. Young people brought up in a world of computers and video games are particularly open to its distinctive aesthetic. When everything is boiled down, anime at its roots is a deeply social experience. Especially with the advent of the internet and anime being so prevalent upon it, it makes it feel as if anime was always a part of life. It becomes not only a medium to enjoy stories that we've never heard before, but also a way that we can connect with people we've never met before, share these unique stories that are unlike anything we'll get from the West, and find ties within them that make them feel deeply personal to many people. And that's what sets anime apart, is its heart. While many animations or animation styles across the world can grow to feel robotic or stiff or soulless, one of the biggest factors in anime success is its passion, and the effect that it can have on people. And this soul of anime, and the way it affects each and every one of us who watch it, is something that likely won't be slowing down anytime soon.